Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at how to access your Plex media remotely. Now one of the benefits of Plex is not just that you have all of your media put into Plex and have all the metadata pulled on it and all of that, but it's also the ability to access this media while you're on the road on your iOS devices or uh, even on Android devices and those sorts of things. So I want to show you today how to make that work. Now before we take a look at how to access it, let's say on an iOS device, uh, let me just show you a couple of things you need to make sure you've got set up. So we're going to go into the Plex app here. We're going to go over to Set settings and we're going to go here to the server and what you want to do is check this area here that says remote access and if you've got this green check mark you're fully accessible outside your network you're in great shape okay because it's uh, it's it's finding my information and it's all ready to go now if for some reason it doesn't find that automatically and open the ports on your router you're gonna have to do that by yourself and so if that's the case and it's got a uh, an X here that says it's not able to access it remotely then you want to come in and check this manually specified a public port you can leave this port alone or you can choose whatever port that's in there and what you do then is you need to go to your airport uh, or to your router software well, whichever one you've got let me just click on this here here I am in my airport utility and you want to go over to wherever your port forwarding is and you can see here I've got my port settings and you just want to open this uh, up and add a new uh, port setting and if I just double click on this and in this case what you want to do is open up a public TCP port and a private TCP port for the whatever that uh, port setting is uh, I know Plex defaults to 32400 uh, uh, you can use that as well and you want it to link to you whatever your private IP address is let me just go ahead and cancel that yeah, let's put this down. So you want to make sure that that's ready to go. If this isn't working, then there's no way you'll be able to access all that stuff remotely because it won't be pushed up to Plex's servers for you to access it on your iOS device. So I just wanted to show you how that works and make sure you've got that set. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what the iOS app looks like and show you how to access your media on it. Okay, so here we are over on the App Store, on the uh, iOS App Store, and this is Plex. Uh, now, the Plex application uh, is free to download and check out. Uh, it is $4.99 uh, to purchase a fully functional copy of it. Uh, or if you've got a Plex Pass, you'll get access to that for free. Uh, so it depends on which way you're doing that. And I'll explain a little more about the Plex Pass in a future screencast. Uh, but let's go ahead and open it and take a look at it. I'm just going to tap on Open here. And so it's going to open Plex for the first time. And so the first thing we need to do is to either sign up for an account or to sign in. And so since we've already got an account, I'm going to tap Sign In here. And it's going to ask me to sign in with my username and password. Now the nice thing is it does have one password access as well to put your password information in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there and we'll sign in for the first time. Okay, so now I've signed in and as you can see here, it says no media is found. And it says they found my server and now it starts loading. And so you can see it's going to walk me through uh, a little bit of what to do with Plex. You can see it shows if I tap up on the top, it pulls out that side menu. And that's how I can access my channel settings and more. I'm going to say, got it, thanks, and tap on that. And so now it tells me that I can choose the media server location by tapping on the top. And it's done it for me and shows me the different servers I have access to. So I've got my own and I've got my local iPad and then I've got a couple of libraries that I'm sharing with as well. So I'll say got it. Thanks for that as well. And so now it says, let's tap it one more time here. And now that I've tapped that, it's just going to say enable notifications. So they can send me notifications to keep me up to date when it's not running. So when sync jobs are complete or friends recommend data, you can authorize it or not. And I'll just go ahead and say authorize and tap that and say OK. And so I've got that all set and ready to go now. So let me just go ahead and I'm just going to tap in the middle of the screen here just to show. Here's my library. And notice it says I can use the cast menu to control or fling my media. Uh, to any app or player like Chromecast or a smart TV. And so it's that idea that I can cast uh, the information over to uh, another application uh, such as, like you said, Chromecast or something like that and just uh, fling my uh, media up there so that I can watch it. And you can see it'll show me the players I have available. I'm just going to say got it, thanks on that one because I'm not concerned about that. And I'm just going to tap off this menu here, 
to bring me back into my main uh, area here. And as you can see, this is the Plex interface, just like we've been talking about in our screencast. You can see I've got my recently added movies there, television. You can see the photos that I've got added on there. If I just scroll down, you can see the watch later uh, area there where I had put that in in an earlier screencast. And so this is the fully functional interface here. Now, as we take a look at this, uh, I've got a discover area and I can tap on a browse area to the right. And so when I tap on browse, that brings up all of the different icons I've got there to take a look at things like my playlists, if I made any, or channels. So if I tap on channels, that'll take me into those iTunes channels I've got and Twit TV that I had added before. If I just tap back for a minute, it takes me back into there. I can tap into movies, and so it'll show me all of my movies on here, and it'll show recently added, top rated in science fiction, uh, by particular um, uh, producers, unwatched movies, uh, recently viewed movies, and you can see it just kind of breaks that down for me really nicely. I just tap back. Uh, I can do the same thing with photos if I had any photos on here, which I do. You can see recently added photos from 2015, photos from the 2010s. You can see how it kind of sets those up for me. Again, if I just tap browse at any time, it takes me into a bigger screen that allows me to look at each of these photos, and I can filter and sort them. Let's just tap back. I've got the same thing with TV shows, and if I tap on my TV shows, you can see there's all of my recently aired TV, and I can start watching here, and I've got the same option with browse. I can browse just my main TV shows, and you know I can tap into them, and once I tap in, you notice I get the same artwork in the back. I have the option to add it to a playlist. Uh, so if I tap this here, you can see I can add it to a playlist if I wanted to set up a video playlist. I'll just put that down. Uh, I can tap the I here that says watch, enable to mark the show as watched or not. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of that and leave it as it is. There's the big play button. Uh, I can also download uh, this for offline viewing. Uh, if I've got a um, Plex Pass, I can uh, set that up on my, on my uh, iPad there to view it for offline viewing. And if I just tap the little line area there, I can rate it for myself. I can uh, add, add it to the photo deck, you know, show it on deck and all that. So I'm just going to close that for a minute. So that gives you an idea of the interface and how that works for TV shows. If I just tap back and keep going back, um, I can get to the movies and do the same thing. If I wanted to go into a movie, let's say uh, Ant-Man, I've got the same options there. Uh, with all of my metadata and everything that I've got there, uh, including trailers and extras and all that sort of thing. So once I play on my screencasting software, it blanks out, so I won't show you what it looks like playing that. But we'll just kind of come back into the movies here, tap back again, and then here we are, and then I can go back to Discover, and I'm back to the main page. Now, just like anything else, if I just come up here and tap on the server area at the top, uh, again, I can get in here and change the library. If I want have a library that I'm sharing with somebody, I can do that in here as well. I'm just going to tap off of that so that disappears. Uh, I can also come up here to my menu area, and you'll notice I've got a few options up here. I've got a sync option and a friends option. Uh, if I just tap on sync there, I can choose how to sync this if I want to do that. That's a Plex Pass uh, feature, so I'll just pop that down. And the same thing here on friends. I can see my friends here and tap on their information or add friends within the interface. Let's put that down. Now you notice I can still get at my home, playlist, channels, and everything here. And I can also get at settings. If I just tap on settings, it brings up a settings interface here uh, where I can work with my account. I can change the experience. I can say don't play trailers. I can put the theme music volume up or down. I can say autoplay, uh, picture in picture if I want to enable that to happen. Let's tap back. Uh, again, there's sync if I want to have sync in there. Uh, I can set up camera upload. Now, if I've got a Plex Pass, uh, I can choose a library to upload my photos to so that they're automatically uploaded to Plex, uh, just like you would do in another application, such as maybe the Photos app in iOS, or if you're doing it with uh, Google, Fo Google Photos or one of those other ones, Plex can function the same way uh, if you've got a Plex Pass. Let's just go back. Uh, I can do the sharing information in here as well. I can share my camera roll uh, with Plex, or I can share synced content. Uh, but I'm just not going to do that because I'll show you those features later. Uh, I do have remote control in here, and I can advertise this as a player so that other Plex apps can fling content to the iPad and control it remotely if I want to do that. So I'm going to leave that on. Uh, I've got my advanced features in here where I can just, again, allow direct streaming, direct play. Uh, I can do the remote audio quality. I can set that up. 
uh, subtitles if I want. Uh, and then you just have all these other things, your server connections, if you wanted to manually manage that yourself. You know, if I tapped on that, I could manually manage my servers in here, but I don't need to do that. And then I can reset the cache or camera upload. So it does give me a, a, the opportunity to kind of manage this just a little bit. And of course, rate on the App Store and all of that. So I'm just going to tap down. So that gives you an idea of how that works. Again, up here, I've got this little um, icon up here that basically gives me all of my announcements. And so it kind of tells me all the new stuff that's happening with Plex. If I just pop that down, I'm back in the interface, touch on the main screen, and I'm back in here. So that gives you a tour uh, of the Plex iOS app. Like I said, it's identical to really what you see uh, with the Plex app on your desktop through the web interface uh, with a few things that are modified for uh, the touch screen interface to make Plex really work for you. Again, if you get those ports opened and you're able to get in here, you'll see all of your different Plex media. Uh, again, if you have your friends that you're sharing with, which we talked about in the previous screencast about sharing, you can share with them as well and really get to the place where you've got all your content where you want it. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.